everybody. Message time. Message time. That's not like hammer time. morning or no it's afternoon I got a message this afternoon I had the the past couple times I've been on I have been kind of hinting towards a um, testimony that I have regarding my baby granddaughter that believe it or not is a month old today little Alice is a month old today and so this message has everything to do with a testimony regarding her birth I thank you, God, for the privilege and the honor of bringing forth your word and declaring your glory uh, in any place that we can, God. Be it Facebook, social media, radio, standing on the corner, in our church, whatever, God. I praise you that we have that freedom. Lord, I pray that what I'm about to say would be anointed by you, God, and they would be your words and not my words, Lord, and they would sink down into the hearts of those who are listening. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Men. All right. All right. Fog report. So, um, my blessed pastors that I used to have, Pastor Dan and Jan, I love them. I miss them with all my heart. Okay. That's all. I, if I say any more, I'm going to cry. But anyway, something that there was many things that he used to say. I mean, he was a card. He was a crack up. I mean, he, we used to joke about how when he came along there, you know, <laughs> batteries were included, <laughs> you know, all over the place. And his mother and his dad, oh my gosh, bless their hearts and rest their souls. And they're in paradise now with Jesus. But boy, were they funny. And they used to joke about him. And we had so much fun with Pastor Dan. But I learned a lot underneath his leadership. One of the many things that I learned from Pastor Dan is how to look for a fog report. What is a fog report? A fog is simply an acronym for favor of God. So, what is your fog report? Are you in the fog today? He would come into service and say, I have a fog report. Or he would say, what is your fog report? Do you got a fog report? Or people would come in and say, hey, Pastor Dan, I got a fog report. Oh, yay, let me hear it. And he'd be so giddy and so glad to hear things like that. He would just delight in that for the people. And so I want to talk about a fog report. What is a fog report? What does it mean to walk in the favor of God? Well, if you do um, a little bit of a a search on God's favor or the word favor, what I found in my search was the phrase demonstrated delight. Delight. I loved that. We know that the word tells us, delight yourself in the way of the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Well, all that means is that he's not going to like you. You don't go down a checklist and say, okay, I got that. Go back, delight myself. Okay, I got that. Go back. Delight. It's not a list that we check off of the things that we want. No, it's delight ourselves in the way of God and he will then put on our hearts what to desire. And quite possibly what to desire would be the ability and the opportunity to delight ourselves in the ways of God more and more and more. And I believe that part of that delighting ourselves in the way of the Lord is the fact that we get to see him delighting in us, a demonstrated delight by him to us. A demonstrated delight of him, his favor coming upon us, could and maybe even arguably should result in testimony. A testimony, a fog report. What's your fog report? How did the Lord, I don't know, demonstrate his favor this week on you? Or this day? Or this minute? Or whatever? What What was your fog report for Monday? What was your fog report last Friday? Could you, could you come up with a fog report? Could you see the favor of God in your life? The demonstrated delight that he has for you? 
Could you see that in your life? In your walk? In your way of uh, being throughout the day? Into the evening? In your relationships that you have? In the church service that you attended? Could you see God's favor being demonstrated within the church service? Within the word that was given? Was there something that spoke to you deeply? Where he demonstrated his delight in you? A demonstrated delight or the favor of God should always probably result in a testimony. What is a testimony? A testimony is a witness. A witness of God's goodness. A witness of what God's done in your life. I have many, many testimonies in my life. A lot of you know it. You know, I've come through a pretty rocky childhood. I've come through some uh, uh, divorce. I've come through single parenting. I've come through being married again, uh, losing my mother to cancer. Um, I fought off and beat cancer with God's grace and his goodness and favor. Myself, I beat cancer. The horrible deaths of many members of my family just in one year. Then the loss of my business and the loss of my home. And then reestablishing ourselves across the state. And praying for 10 years for grandchildren and all of a sudden getting them. And not only getting them, but now in a year and a half, I'm going to have four. In a year and a half, we're going to have four. That is a witness of God's goodness. That is expressing and showing his favor. That is giving a fog report. As Pastor Dan used to say, what's your fog report? Do you have some fog in your life, Rhonda, you want to share? If you have to sit there and think about it. I don't know what to say there. Because favor of God should be obvious in your life. We should be looking for that because we're delighting ourselves in Him. Delight yourself in the way of the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Part of the desires of your heart is He's going to put those things on your heart as to what to desire. Well, what could be better than desiring more favor? That's what He wants to give, so why wouldn't He put that on our hearts? Let's go into the Word. Psalm 84, verses 11 and 12. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Let's go to the Amplified. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows grace and favor and honor. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, how blessed, here it is, listen, and greatly favored is the man who trusts in you, believing in you, relying on you, and committing himself to you with confident hope and expectation. So first of all, in different versions, the Lord bestows favor and honor is also interpreted as grace and glory or just favor. God's favor is that of his own honor, his grace, his glory that is poured out onto us. Okay? Who is the us? From those who walk uprightly. Or over here, from those whose walk is blameless. We aren't perfect till we get to heaven and we've been perfected. But while we are here, if we trust in the Lord God as our Savior, in other words, if when we have come to Jesus out of the... Uh, knowing that we need a savior and we believe on him. We believe that God sent his son to die for us. He died on the cross and he died for our sins. And three days later, he rose from the dead. And we believe that we can't forgive ourselves of our sin. Only he can forgive us of our sin. So we come to him knowing that we need a savior. And therefore, we trust in him. And by our faith, we receive God's grace in that redemption. Then we are therefore walking uprightly in that trust, in that uh, reliance upon him. I love how the Amplified puts it. Believing in you, relying on you, and committing himself to you with confident hope and expectation. That is a person who is walking uprightly with God. So if you are saved and you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, then you're walking uprightly. 
And in that walking, in that action, you rely on God, you trust in Him, you believe in Him, and you have a confident hope and expectation that, that He's got goodness for you, that He is protecting you, He's protecting your family, and He wants to bestow His favor upon you. In my Bible, it goes further. Let me go over here. Choose God's presence above worldly favor. God will protect you, give you grace, and give good things to you. What is worldly favor? Anything in the world that promises to do us good, or be good for us, or uh, treat us well, or give us great success. It's part of our flesh to a certain extent. Uh, could be fleshly desires, a worldly favor, something that promises good out there that has zero, nothing to do with God. So what this is saying is choose God's presence, being with the Lord, being of the Lord, being in Him, aka walking uprightly, instead of choosing what the world promises us as good. Because the world can only give us like this much, where God can give us way above, okay? God, and in that, choosing his presence over worldly, uh, worldly favor, God will protect us, give us grace, and give us good things. We're not in it just for the good things. This message is one of which that if we are just seeking his hand instead of his face, then we're not getting it. We have to seek God's face, meaning we have to seek God's presence. We have to be, we have to seek relationship with Him. We have, and when we're in relationship with Him, not only will we know it, we will understand that because the Holy Spirit will give us revelation there. But when we seek full relationship with Him is when He pours out His grace, His favor upon us. What is grace? Grace is unmerited favor. I found this and I loved it. And so I printed it off. Listen to this. His undeserved kindness, undeserved meaning we can't earn this and we don't deserve it. When we come to him, then we get an automatic inheritance into his kingdom. We, we have this inherited sonship in him. And we get what he has for us out of nothing that we do. It's just because of who he is. So his undeserved kindness that he shows us through death and resurrection of Jesus Christ for the sins of the world. Faith is simple. It's simple trust that clings to God's grace, holding him to his promise of salvation in Christ. You say, well, I get that part, Rhonda, but I can't hold him to giving me all these good things. Why not? I'm not telling you, giving you all these good things in the ways or the eyes of the world. What I'm saying in, in, is in the ways and the eyes of God and his heart. Well, how do I know what that is? Well, by getting into his word and trusting and having a confident hope and an expectation that he wants to pour out this demonstrated delight in the things that he does in the ways that he is and the things that he has for us through Jesus Christ which enables us to be able to come to the father that's the bridge that we have back to the father so this is all about favor and what is God's favor and why would he give it to me and and what would it mean to have a testimony or a fog report in God's demonstrated delight over one's life well, I have a fog report, and it's kind of a big one, and it deserved its own platform just to share. Seven years ago, on January 25th, 2015, my little brother, who was 39 years old at the time, was taken from us out of this world. He's now in heaven, and he was taken from us in a very horrible, tragic death, and my life changed forever. His death was very traumatic for me. I had a hard time with his death. I remember approaching the first anniversary of that on January 25th, 2016. 
I began to pray and I said to the Lord, Lord, I can, I feel scared approaching this date. I feel shaky in my heart. I feel shaky in my soul. I can tell that there's depression that sits in there. I can tell that there's, um, uh, just a, like a deep dark abyss that comes over me every time I think about this time. And God was so gracious with me because I was really, really, really honest with him. And I told him, I said, I don't want to get every single year around that time and start to deal with this in this way. And, you know, um, like, I don't want that approaching date to plague me, to make me uh, not want to go there, to give me fright, to give me anxiety. I don't want that date to come up and be one of which that I can't function because all of the sudden I go down and down and down. And I, I, I want to be able to set those things aside and, and um, get to the point where I can face that without, you know, crashing or anything. And I also felt like the Lord had dealt with me through that and said, if I don't um, trust in him, then I could very well constantly be in that state of mind when that date would approach. I'm not saying that this is easy, but necessary. And in the, the act of it being necessary and walking through it, God can sustain us in that. And he did sustain me. And therefore, I prayed and I said, Lord, I want to do something different for this. And I want to attack it right now. Every year when I approach this date, will you please strengthen me in the wherewithal to do something different and something new every single year? I want a new memory. I want a new you know, place to go. Um, maybe I take a trip. Maybe I just do something I've never done before. Maybe I um, go to a play. Maybe I read a new book. I'm not very good at reading books, but I just want a new memory, something that brings new hope, something that brings new life, something that it doesn't make me want to erase what happened that day, but it gives me something new to think about on or in that time. And it didn't have to be on that specific day, but somewhere around there, okay? And I said, Lord, and I wasn't asking him to create that for me. I was asking him to strengthen me in creating it and making it happen, okay? The first year, I don't know what we did. I, I mean, the first year was my prayer for that. The second year, I think we took a trip. I think we did something you know, off the wall. I remember one year of uh, going to Tacoma. I don't even like Tacoma. But we went and stayed at the Tacoma waterfront overnight. And we went down to the ships and we looked around. We went to the beach. It was something to do. We went out to dinner. It was something I had never done before. Uh, one year we had family pictures taken. We um, had just moved over here and we had all the kids come over and we went down to the water, down to the Columbia in uh, downtown Wenatchee to the park and we did pictures down there. So that was something new. That was a memory. Uh, January 25th of 2020, I got asked to go out to dinner from my son and daughter-in-law and so me and my daughter um, palled together and we went out to this dinner. My husband wasn't available at that time. I found out later that he knew ahead of time what was going to happen. But they proceeded to tell me on January 25th, 2020, that I was going to be a Grammy for the first time. That was telling me about Lyra coming later on that year in September. And we left that restaurant and my daughter looked at me and said, how's that for a new memory, mom? And I'm like, yeah, I that's... It's just awesome. And the kids didn't plan it that way. It just happened to work on that day. So that was a pretty awesome memory. And I took that as favor from God. He gave me that. Because my heart wanted to stay true to that promise that I made. And I asked him for the strength to move through that. So here we go into um, January 25th, 2022. I don't remember what happened on 2021. I think... I think we went for a drive or something. We did something different. I can't remember what it was. We might have went up in the mountains. I don't know. 
Oh, I think we went over to the west side and visited or something. So we just did something, okay? So anyway, January 25th, 2022 is coming. So let's just say it's approaching. We're around, I don't know, Thanksgiving-ish. And all the while, I knew that my granddaughter was due. Her due date was February 2nd, 22. 2222 was her due date. Courtney's baby. I began to pray around Thanksgiving and ask the Lord, Lord, could it be possible? Is it at all possible, Lord, that you could have Alice be born on January 25th? I know you're the creator of the universe and you're in charge of all life, so I have no business asking you when to make somebody's birthday happen or, you know, let alone anything else like that. I'm just asking, is it possible? Could you possibly make it be that Alice would be born on January 25th, 2022? So I just kind of laid that prayer there and I walked away, so to speak. And life happened. And in the back of my mind, I knew I had prayed for that. And I knew it was possible. It was only a week off of her due date. And so probable maybe not probable but possible yes and I thought you know it's her first pregnancy I'm sure that's not going to happen normally first pregnancies are always late right January 24th approaches I wake up early in the morning to my daughter calling me and she had started with a couple texts and I'm reading these texts I'm going that's just what and so she calls me and she goes mom I, I think I'm in labor I said well honey that can't be because you're a week away are you sure it's labor she goes well I'm pretty sure it's labor and so that morning started out with her um, recording contractions and I thought well maybe we won't get through the day because you know it's quite possible this is just a fluke and maybe she's preparing for next week or the week after that something like that maybe she's got a little false labor and I got off the phone and I looked at my husband and I said I, I, I need to tell you a secret and he's like, what? And I said, I started praying about two, two and a half months ago that Alice would be born on January 25th. And he goes, did you now? And I said, yeah, I, I did. And I said, so I, I said, I don't know, but I mean, I'm, and if she's born today, then fine, that'd be great, you know, but, and not to cause my daughter any harm or anything like that but it's like lord if you could just make it last till 1201 that'd be so awesome so we just kind of let it go and a few hours later sure enough she's still contracting and the contractions were getting closer a little closer in time so we're thinking all right maybe she needs to go in she went in and she was in labor we were in labor or we weren't but you know i was going to be there for the birth and so all three of us uh, her, my son-in-law, and me were like, okay, I guess we got labor going, right? And I'm thinking, all right, Lord, I know I have no business asking this necessarily because, again, you're the creator of the universe, but, you know, can you be with my daughter and just see her through this? And if you could just make it go into midnight, that'd be so awesome. So we get to the hospital, and because um, I'm no longer considered mom. I'm considered second support person when it comes to this stuff now. I'm not allowed to be in there until she gets into active labor. So I find myself sitting down in the um, lounge area or, or, you know, whatever, waiting room, playing cribbage. And my son-in-law, who's going up and down, checking on her, and then coming back down and playing cards with me, he sits there and he keeps me company, and we're waiting all through it. And about 9.30 at night, I realize, this looks like it's going to happen. And so I share with my son-in-law my news. And he goes, wow, did you really? And I said, I did. I prayed for this. I said, now, mind you, it's not that I want to forget my brother on this day. And he finished my sentence for me, and he says, but you would have a birthday to celebrate instead. I said, exactly. There would be new life on that day. And that was part of something that I had asked the Lord for. So, now we're past midnight. We're well into January 25th, and, you know, this baby's coming. 
and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I can't believe it. And mind you, you know, this is just my prayer request. This had nothing to do with them. This had nothing to do with the baby and, and what she means or, or what that day means for them. It was me. It was my prayer request for something special. So here comes Alice into the world at around 6.15 in the morning. And I'm just floored. I mean, I am just floored. I don't even know what to say. I don't know how to think. I just, what a special, special honor it was to be there and be part of that and see her come into the world. And on the day that I asked for being the second support person, you can only stay there because of the new COVID rules. You can only stay there for two hours after the baby's born. Once those two hours are up, you have to leave. Well, so I'm waiting and I'm waiting because they're going through all the necessary things they have to go through with the baby and they're doing their own time with her. And it's a very special time. So I'm just kind of sitting in the background watching and waiting and listening and looking at my daughter and being so proud of her and looking at this baby and thinking, oh my goodness, this is child number three. This is grandchild number three in about a year and a half. And at that one and a half year mark, coming at the end of March, there's going to be child number four. I just can't believe how much God's blessed me, blessed us. So I finally get my chance to hold Alice. And I take her in my arms. <laughs> And I sit there and I look at her. And I, I just, I'm amazed. I'm just amazed. And I say to God, I say, God, I know this sounds foolish. As a Christian, I should know this. As a daughter of you, I should know the answer to this. But I just want to hear your heart. And I looked at this little baby and I said, why? Why did you so blatantly answer my prayer? Why? What made you answer my prayer to give this child on this date that I asked for? Not understanding, not knowing if that could ever happen. And I really, really, really wanted to know his heart. Okay? I really wanted to know, like I wanted to hear or get a revelation of what God was thinking as to why. Why would you blatantly answer my prayer and give me this child on this date? And almost as soon as I got that out of my mouth, I could hear down deep in my spirit the words, because you have my favor. And I just sat there and I looked at her face and I said, I have God's favor. And he said, because I favor you. And that caused me to look up and research God's favor and understand that when he favors us, he delights in giving us what we've asked for. He delights in that. It gives him pleasure. God's grace is, I do not deserve God's grace. My life and my past and my history, I don't deserve God's grace or his favor. I get it because of who Jesus is and who I am in Jesus. Because I choose to walk uprightly, not perfect. I'm not perfect till I get to heaven. But because I choose to walk in an upright manner, meaning I believe in Jesus Christ as my Savior, I call Him Lord of my life, I trust in Him, I go to the Father for everything, I desire to know what His heart is, I desire to know where His uh, grace lies and where the hope in Him is first. I, I do not want to look on the ways of the world before I want to look on His ways. Because I walk in that way, because I walk in a, a with a spirit of repentance in my own life, knowing that I can't get through a day without sinning, and so therefore I need to come before God and not seek His hand, but seek His face. 
And I can only do that because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And that he gives me that. He clothes me with that righteousness through him. I am undeserving in and of myself. But because I'm in Jesus Christ, I get God's favor. Because you're in Jesus Christ, you get God's favor. And you can walk around with, like Pastor Dan used to say, what's your fog report? You can walk around with that attitude. Hey, I have a fog report. Okay, tell me, tell me, what's your fog report? I want to hear it. A fog report, a favor of God. My fog report was that my granddaughter was born on the day I asked her to be born to give me a new hope on that day every time that day approaches. Now I will still remember my brother, but I get to celebrate the birth of my granddaughter. And God did that for me just because he wanted to. Just because he delights in me. What's your fog report? God's favor is in your life. Start looking for it. You'll see it. It's there. Let me pray for you. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for this word. And I pray, Lord, that it has sunk deep, deep into the hearts of your children, God. I pray that your word go forth and bring forth good and abundant life as the seed grows. I pray that there were ears to hear. I pray for your anointing over all of this. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I pray that even the smallest seed of this message goes deep into prepared soil of your heart, brings forth life abundant. May the Lord bless you and keep you and his face shine upon you. See you later. God bless.